Let's all stand to our feet today. Welcome to Big Community Church. So good to see you out this morning.
Mullen. You may be seated. Excited to be here today, would you just please clap your hands? We will also be honoring our high school graduates and some college graduates today. And when all of that is done, some of our students have put together some questions to ask Pastor Brad. That should be interesting. As always, we would love it if you would fill out one of our connection cards. You can leave as little or as much as you like to on that card. And on your way out, you can drop the card in the offering buckets at the back. And speaking of offering buckets, if you would like to give to Fit Church, you can drop your tithes and offerings in those buckets, or you can give online. Because of your generosity, students like me and the ones sitting behind me get to hear God's word and get to grow closer to God each and every week. Fit Community Church exists to lead people into faithful, intentional, and trusting relationships with Jesus. So everything we do here today is meant to fulfill that mission. So thank you again for being here and for being a part of this service. What we want to do now is take a moment to honor the memory of all the brave men and women who died in the performance of their duties while serving this country. Because some gave all, we all have freedom. Let's take a moment to watch this video. So thank you to those who gave everything. How do you honor the brave men and women who paid for our freedom? The truth is, there are no words. There is nothing we can say when the sacrifice speaks for itself. Today, we honor our heroes. Lives given, not in vain, but with purpose. We stand grateful for their courage. Blessed by their strength and encouraged by their resolve. held together by the thread of the American soldier. Today, we remember their sacrifice. If you want to just bow your heads with me. Father, we thank you today for the opportunity to come to your house and to worship you. And God, we thank you for the freedoms that you've given us. God, there are 
people who are called every day to lead and sacrifice their lives so that we may have freedom. Father, I pray that we would not take that freedom lightly or take it for granted. Many thousands upon thousands of brave men and women sacrificed their lives. And God, I know that there is meaning in that sacrifice. So Father, I just thank you that we can stand here today for the moment and proclaim freedom in our country. But even more important than that, Lord, you have shown us what it looks like to have freedom in Jesus. Just as the brave men and women sacrificed their life for freedom in our land, Lord, we know that you sacrificed your son's life for freedom for all of eternity. Freedom from death and freedom from hell, freedom from the grave. God, there's no greater sacrifice that has been made. But as we come together today and we think about this just sacrificial love, I pray that we would just internalize that. We wouldn't take it lightly. We would leave here saying that we, we understand more today and when we came in, just how much you love us. And maybe today, you would realize for the first time, or the first time in a long time, that someone has sacrificed their life so that you could be here today. And God, whatever happens next, we know you've been with us this far. And you promised you'd never leave us, never forsake us. And Lord, we thank you today. We love you. Because you love us. For all those who've gone home before us, those brave men and women, God, I thank you for their service today. For families here who have lost a loved one in the art of battle or, or, or war or overseas or whatever the case may be, God, I pray you would put a special touch on them today. You would relieve hurt. You would relieve grief, Lord. You would let us to see just how great that sacrifice was. What an amazing time to be alive today, to proclaim the name of Jesus, to stand where people with giant shoulders have stood before. Thank you, Lord, for sending them before us. I thank you for your mercy and your grace. In Jesus' name, I pray. So sometimes, we use a lot of technology around here. How many of y'all know that technology is extremely aggravating? <laughs> Can we just be honest and say this technology is extremely aggravating? Because it is. But sometimes, we do all we can to practice. You ever, you ever put all your effort into something and you, and you practiced and you practiced and still nothing went right? You ever done that? Today's that day. <laughs> And I know why. I've been saying this recently. See, there's things that's going on here at this church, and the devil hates it. He absolutely hates it. Like, if he sent you here today to disrupt what these teenagers are about to do, I pray Jesus gets all over you. I pray he slaps a smile on your face, and you just can't help it. Amen? Because he's not going to win. How many of y'all believe that? This lap, this, this iPad ain't going to beat us. We'll throw this thing out in the road, let them run over, and we'll just say hymns. <laughs> but what we are going to do today, we're going to give God the glory. Amen. Because he is good even when we're not. Amen. And even when we're sour, God is good. Even when we don't like it, God is good. Just say this with me. Say, God is good. God is good. All the time. All the time. I knew y'all knew that. God is good. Amen. <laughs> We're going to sing today. This is Miss Aubrey. Y'all give Aubrey a hand today. And Aubrey said, she's like, she said, I, I, I just feel like God wants me to sing this song. And I first said, no. <laughs> just kidding. I'm just kidding. Don't tell them that. I was
was like, I don't know if I can sing that song. And, and then, um, and Ethan, we got the words? Yeah, let's go to the next one. There we go. But this song's called Chase Me Down. And I don't know if y'all know this, but you can run all you want to, but God will chase you.
want to uh, open up your Bibles to Romans chapter 12, verses 1 through 2. And so, dear brothers and sisters, as I plead with you to give your bodies to God, because all he has done for you, let them be a living and holy sacrifice, the kind he will find acceptable. This is truly the way to worship him. Don't copy the behavior and customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. Amen. Amen. Are we doing graduate today? Is everybody on the list? What's the next slide? Is it? Be, yeah, it is. I knew we had something up there. All right, Miss Jamie, come on up for a second. Boom. We get to go eat with Ryan every time we go to the mountains. He never paid. 
Yep. We put some balloons in there too. Not balloon up balloons. We're not starting a party. Alright? We'll start a party later. But the balloons are so they remember not to blow up when things don't go as planned. Amen. How many of y'all know they're still young, right? They do that. So do we. But Colossians 3, 13 and 14, bear with each other and forgive whatever grievances you may have against one another. Right? And forgive us as the Lord forgave you. Man, don't we need that today? And then I think there's some Country Time Lemonade candy in there. There's not. There's Sour Patch Kids. Oh, there's Sour Patch Kids. Is that something about these guys? Are they sour? They're sour and sweet. All right. So they're sweet and sour to remind you to appreciate the differences in others. Right? 1 Corinthians 12, the body is a unit, though it is made up of many parts. And every part has a vital purpose in God's kingdom. And there's some buttons in there. They're multi-purpose buttons. So if you blow out a button on your pants or your shirt. Do we have one of them buttons in there? A couple of these guys got two, just in case. Just in case, right? There are two buttons. It's not for and, and, and they're really large buttons, just in case. Anyway, so the button is a reminder to button your lips even if you can't say something nice, right? <laughs> Logan said at the very least say something instructive. So constructive. constructive. <laughs> she told y'all he corrects me, right? James 1 verse 19 is, says, my dear brothers, take note of this. Everyone should be, y'all know this scripture, quick to what? Listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry. You can tell your neighbor that if you like. There's also some band-aids in there because everybody's going to get an unexpected boo-boo. Anybody ever had an unexpected boo-boo, right? James 5 16 says, therefore, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. That's good stuff. Do we have bubbles? We do. The bubbles go with the balloons at the party later that's happening at your house. And they're sensitive bubbles. And, and it's, it's a reminder that they should have fun. Just because you're grown don't mean you can't have fun anymore. Amen. Right? So James 5.13 says, Is any one of you in trouble? He should pray. Is anyone happy? Let him sing songs of praise. Amen. So that's what the bubbles are for. And then there's some crackers in there. Do we have crackers in there? Cool. All right. It's for when dinner still, still seems like hours away. You know, when they move out, Mama ain't cooking no more. <laughs> Andrew, when you move out, Mama ain't cooking no more. All right. Go to Tammy's house. <laughs> Just kidding. Just kidding. Uh, Matthew 5, 6. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. So even when you have no crackers, man, you can still be filled by the Word of God. So... And then there's some tissues in there, and you may need to give these to the ones that you brought with you today, your loved ones, they might need them. But the tissues are there for just multi-purpose, whether you're blowing your nose or wiping the tears from your eyes or whatever it may be. And you may need to borrow their tissues today. We're going to pray over them here in just a minute. But Ecclesiastes 3, verse 1 and verse 4 says, there's a time for everything. And a season for every activity under heaven. A time to weep and a time to laugh. A time to mourn, to mourn and a time to dance. See, it's these guys' time to grow up. I mean that in the best way possible. They're graduating high school and they're graduating college. And when we do that, it's time to become who God has created us to be, right? As we're moving into, into that moment. I told you somebody would need them. And then the final thing in there, there's a nail in their bag. There's a nail in their bag. And the nail is to remind you of what you are worth to Jesus. Those nails came out of Brad's tool, tool belt. <laughs> and it's the most important thing we gave you today because I don't ever want you guys to remember who you are and whose you are, who you belong to. Because you might have earthly parents and grandparents and friends, but your heavenly Father loves you beyond measure today. And he's brought you this far, and he's not going to leave you now that you're grown. He's going to continue to walk with you and lead you as you figure out who you are in your workplace, your married life, whatever that looks like, whatever, whoever you are. If you stay single, Paul was single, and there's nothing wrong with that, right? Just, you, just be in relationship with Jesus no matter what. Andrew, open up that wrap gift real quick. Right, yeah. Let me read this thing. 1 Peter 4.13 says, But rejoice that you participate in the sufferings of Christ, so that you may be overjoyed when his glory is revealed. The, the rat gift is something that was picked specifically for you guys, too. I think Ryan already knows this about me, but this is one of my favorite verses at this stage in your life because 
you're all wondering what is next in, in your transition, what has God got for you? She really didn't want to get in it. Yeah, it's okay. You don't have a mic? I don't have a mic. All right, my real man. Okay, here you go. <laughs> Not a switchblade, just a little pocket knife. <laughs> Brad, that was brutal. That was brutal. It's a keychain with uh, Jeremiah 29, 11 on it, just to remind each of you guys that God does have a plan for you. It doesn't matter how long that plan takes. He knows what he's doing, and you guys just got to be willing and listening. There's also a compass. It's just cute because you got to know where to look for direction. I'm going to pray over you guys, okay? Here's what I want you to do right now. So you don't have to get up because there's a lot of people in the room today. But in a posture of prayer, I just want you to take your hands, extend them out as if you were reaching for them. And then we're just going to pray over these guys. Um, and we're going to ask God to bless them in their next phase of life. So let's go to the Lord in prayer today. Father, I thank you this morning for Logan and for Ryan and for Andrew, God, and for friendships. God, I just thank you for the power you've demonstrated in their lives, Lord. I pray over just the all the blessings that you've given them and their families and all the loved ones they brought with them to church today. Lord, you, I know that these are your people. God, I pray you would use these three young men to continue to do kingdom work, to continue to seek the lost so that they may be saved. God, whether in their workplace, in their future lives and relationships, where they always seek to have you first and foremost above all things. God, the things that you create are perfect. And as I look at these young men today, God, even, uh, even if they have flaws today, we know you make all things new. You make things perfect, Lord, in your own time. And so I just ask that as we all just extend our hands over them today, with the power of the Spirit, just dwell in their hearts, Lord. Would you use them? Would you send them out? God, we, whether, we don't know where they may end up, what church they may serve in, or even what country they may serve in. But God, you already know. You have a purpose and a plan for their life. Help us. This is where we come in, Lord. Please help us today as pastors, as family, moms, dads, uncles, grandparents, whoever, just friends. Help us to help these young men just be all they can be for Lord Jesus. Help us to be an encouragement to them. Help us to be uh, helpmates to them, to walk by their sides in times of need, to give them uh, just a smile when they're feeling down, when it looks like life is beating them up, when the job doesn't come in like they anticipated. God, help us to come along the side of them and show them your love. Most of all, Lord, I pray that they would always seek you first, that they would realize that their salvation was a free gift how much you love them. May that nail in the bag always take us back to the nail-scarred hands on the cross of Calvary, where Jesus bled and died for us. God, I thank you and I love you today for these young men and all the ones you sent out today, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. And everybody said, amen. 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 Give them a big hand. Come on, somebody.
just, I'm, I'm thankful for Declan, and um, I just see God working in his life, and uh, I hope that y'all do too. It's really blessed my life, and I, I just love you, Declan, so you go on with it. Well, uh, my tablet isn't really working, so I think I'm going to have to get my paper from my mama. <laughs> Always got to have a backup plan, y'all. See, he came prepared. Yeah, thank goodness we got that. He came prepared. <laughs> Old school. Can't beat it. Oh, yeah. Love this technology. <laughs> so, to start, I'd like to pray. Um, dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this day that you've given us to be in your house and worship you. Thank you that our youth group has been able to be on stage and be able to honor and glorify you through music, speaking, um, sharing your word, and I pray that well, this can positively affect people's lives and that they can see that if they can see uh, the Lord's light shining through us and that that'll make them draw close to you. In your name I pray. Amen. Amen. So. To begin, I just want to dive straight into God's Word. I'm going to read a verse, and it was one of my dad's favorite verses, and it was also something that he based his day-to-day -day life on every day. That verse is Psalm 118, 24. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. A lot of you may not know this, but I lost my dad to cancer about six years ago, and he taught me a lot of good things in the nine years I had with him. But the best thing he taught me was to try and find that joy in each and every day. And even through his cancer, he still showed that that joy could be found in the little things. And for example, when he was going through chemotherapy, um, his immune system was completely shut down. But after a while, the doctors finally cleared him to go to big open places, such as open stores, the mountains, the beach, anywhere where he wasn't in close contact with people. And, um, but one of his happy places was actually the beach. So that summer, we went and stayed at the Prince Beach House. And while we, did, while we were there, Dad was really sick, but so we had to push him out on the uh, beach with a wheelchair. But despite that pain, he still truly enjoyed himself. He felt the breeze, he heard the waves, he felt the hot sand underneath his feet. He watched me and my brother play in the sand and the water. And he just really took in God's creation. It was great to see him that happy. And it's the little things like that that God gives us that makes life truly, truly worth living. When your joy comes from the Lord, it's easy to see that joy in everyday things. On top of my dad's outlook on that joy, I personally take away some other things, such as you definitely can't take things in life for granted. You really have to take the time to appreciate everything you've been given, whether that be people, relationships, <laughs> Even dogs, I love the dogs. Um, cats, for some people. <laughs> Looking at you, Grammy. Um, and you really just have to take that time to appreciate everything you've been given. And you can find joy in earthly things, but it's not really complete. I mean, things such as music, sports, cars, guns, um, but that true joy that you're looking for is only found in God. And here's another verse that follows this thing. Romans 15, 13 says, May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him, so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Verse talks about being filled with joy and peace. And like I said, the only way you can get that is through the Holy Spirit. And happiness is what people seek out in life, but so many of them are completely missing the point. By a mile. They try to find their happiness in the material things, like I mentioned earlier, but that won't fulfill you with the way you're looking for. Worldly things can be great. I mean, God gave us the abilities to enjoy them for us to enjoy them, but that's not a relationship with Christ. It's not as fulfilling as that. And satisfaction is another word that goes hand in hand with joy. You want to be satisfied after a meal, satisfied with what you buy at the store, satisfied with yourself as a person. 
And we think that the satisfaction brings joy sometimes, don't we? And we think that that joy brings peace with yourself. The thing is, that's completely wrong if the Lord isn't in it. Like, he needs to be in the center of your life, not just thrown in every once in a while. You need to, like, circle him like we circle the sun. If you ever want to feel that re real joy, he needs to be there. Matthew 6, 33 says, But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. This is God telling you that he doesn't want to be in the back seat. He wants to be right up front in your life. It also brings me back to the word joy. The verse says, all these things will be added to you. That means the joy, the satisfaction, the peace, that will all come if you give your life to God. Everybody can find their thing that brings them true joy. You might have to search for it for a little while, but you'll find it. God will put it in your life. Whether that be serving in church, witnessing people, serving in your community, being a missionary, whether that's in your community or outside of it, and even something as simple as serving your family. Um, I find my joy in playing guitar at church. Music has always been one of the biggest things in my life, and that really gets me going to be able to come here and be able to um, share my gifts for God. I mean, I really just can't wait to do it. And that's my way of serving. That brings me the real joy that I'm talking about. And I know that my gift comes from the Lord. And I'm glad I can honor him by using that for his glory. So I started playing guitar when I was eight. Now I'm 14. So over the past six years, my passion has definitely come and gone. Like, I haven't always been as prevalent <coughs> as I am now, but... So at our previous church, there weren't really any opportunities for me to play my guitar there, so that was a little bit of a struggle. Um, and um, but here at Fit, my passion has been revived and reignited because I've been able to share the love. <laughs> um, and one thing I learned through that experience is that joy doesn't always come overnight. You have to have patience. I had to wait for five and a half years till I found my thing that really clicked with me. And good things always come with time. God's always going to provide those things if you're patient. Psalm 30 verse 5 says, Weeping may last through the night, but joy comes in the morning. Part of being patient is knowing that God is always faithful to his promises. He um, always keeps his covenant. So there's a song uh, by Casting Crowns called Praise You in the Storm. And the chorus goes like, and I'll praise you in the storm and I will lift my hands. For you are who you are, no matter where I am. And every tear I've cried, you hold in your hand. You never left my side. And though my heart is torn, I will praise you in the storm. And that ties in because um, like the verse says, weeping may last in the night. And that night, <coughs> night, you didn't hear that voice crack. <laughs> um, that night is the storm and the tribulations and trials that life throws at you. It's always a curveball. You never know what's going to happen. And um, Psalm 33, verse 4 says, For the word of the Lord is upright, and all his work is done in faithfulness. What that verse says to me is that God is sovereign. He keeps his promises to us. He keeps his promises of his love through the storm. He kept his covenants to Moses, Noah, Abraham, and everyone else who he's ever made a promise to. I mean, he promised thousands of years ago that he would send his son to die for our sins. And guess what? He sent his son to die for our sins. And when the Israelites were wandering through the desert, he provided them with manna and water. I mean, they hated it, but he still provided for them. He will always be faithful because he's a perfect God. He's without fault, without sin, and any shortcomings. What he says stands forever, so there's absolutely no reason to doubt him. Another part of that patience that I mentioned is staying faithful to the Lord. Revelation 2, verse 10 says, Do not fear what you are about to suffer. Behold, the devil is about to throw some of you into prison, that you may be tested, and for ten days you will have tribulation. Be faithful unto death, and I will give you the crown of life. To me, this is saying, again, that you have to stay faithful to God no matter what comes your way. 
So as of recently, my family's been doing a Bible study on the book of Philippians. And Paul was in prison when he wrote that book. But despite his horrible circumstances, being thrown in prison only for being a Christian, he still encouraged the church of Philippi to live out their faith and to find joy in every single part of life. So Philippians verse, uh, chapter 4, verses 4 through 13, bear with me here. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. Let your reasonableness be known to everyone. The Lord is at hand. Do not be anxious about anything, but, every, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, and whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. What you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, practice these things, and the Lord and the God of peace will be with you. I rejoice in the Lord greatly that now at length you have revived your concern for me. You were indeed concerned for me, but you had no opportunity. Not that I am speaking of being in need, for I have learned in whatever situation I am to be content. I know how to be brought low, and I know how to abound. In any and every circumstance, I have learned the secret of facing plenty and hunger, abundance and need. I can do all things through him who strengthens me. Again, Paul was in prison because of his faith in God. He could have become depressed. He could have shut himself off from the world. He could have become angry at God or other people in general. But instead, he chose to continue to reflect the joy that the Lord gave him. And he reflected that joy into the hearts of the Philippians. His message on top of uh, staying joyful is to stay faithful to God until the very end. Because again, he always provides. Even when times are tough, he is always there for you. Trusting him will get you further than anything else in life. Patience and faithfulness are what brings the true joy and satisfaction that we as Christians seek out. Let me leave you with this. What can you do to seek out real joy through the Lord? So I don't even have to. You ever had somebody, just, y'all know how this is. You ever had somebody start praying and it just gets weird? Raise your hand. You ever had that? It's just like they change their voice. This is like completely weird. God needs you to be you. And God needs me to be me. Because he made you completely unique and individual. And he didn't need the same way. So when I talk to God, it's just like if I was talking to my dad. I don't have to be somebody different to talk to him. I just have to just go to him and just start talking. And you can talk about anything. And we call that prayer, but you could call it conversation. But the cool thing about prayer, and when prayer really works, and if you don't know this, this is a great lead and segue. When you have a repentant heart, when you say, Father, I am not just sorry for what I've done or the sins I've committed, but God, I'm thanking you today for completely removing that sin from my life so that I can be free from it. All of a sudden, you open up a pathway to God that wasn't open before. And it only happens through prayer. You know, on Wednesday nights, you know, like we did last week, 
We flooded the stage and the steps last week. We don't let anybody on the stage. We just flooded the steps. Just, just tell the truth. But the great thing about that is, is when people come and they no longer feel any shame because of their prayers and they just fall out and they just give it all to God, it opens a door that Jesus had opened years ago when he hung on the cross. That until we repent of our sins is a closed door. But when you go to God in prayer, it's like the double doors out there. They're open wide for you to walk right in. And so the power of prayer is tremendous. That's why I encourage you, if you're not a praying person, I don't want you to think it's something weird that you have to do. It's a conversation that is amazing. It's beautiful. And God misses you when you don't talk to him. And so maybe today, thank you for the question, Joe. Maybe today, you, if you've not been praying recently, maybe you would just start with saying, God, forgive me of my sins. Now let's talk about all this other stuff. And you'd be amazed at what he would show you in the moment. Amen? Is that all right? Cool. Thank you, Joe. We got one more? Closer to God. And now, wow, we, we all want to know, right? Well, Joe's part of his question was part of it. Through prayer, we grow closer to God for certain, right? I think through praise. How many of y'all just feel better when you praise? Amen. Just raise your hands right now. You've been sitting for a while. I'll make you stand. But doesn't that feel good to stretch and just praise if you were reaching for God? Right? So I think we grow closer to him when we praise. And what do we praise for? I don't pray, I don't, we don't praise him for the earthly things, right? Because that's all material. That's going to go away anyway. You praise him for the day. You praise him for the breath. You praise him for the relationships. You praise him for the opportunity to praise him. You ever thought about why you come to church? Like God opened up an opportunity for you to come? And it's not to come and be a lump on a, or a frog on a lily pad, right? And to observe. It is to participate in acts of praise and worship. And if you can't play the guitar, don't feel bad. I can barely play it. If you can't sing, don't sweat it. I can barely do that. But you can lift up your voice. And you can just say, God, here I am. Use me just as I am. You know what he'll do? He'll draw you in closer to him. And you'll feel that connection like you've never felt before. So prayer, praise, worship, and then serve. The more you serve, the more opportunities come about to serve. And the more God will bless your acts of service. So remember this. It's not by works that you're saved. But by your salvation you'll do good works. Amen. Amen. And that will help you grow closer to God. Any more? What would you say that God is? What, what is? Okay. <laughs> Exactly what I was trying to avoid. <laughs> I tried to think of a marble. Thank you, Elijah. Three things that God is. Three things that God is. Number one, God is love. For God so loved the world, He gave His only begotten Son, John three sixteen. Most famous verse ever tells us that God is love. God is faithful. For He is faithful to forgive. You and me and all of us of our sins if we will be repenting from him. He is faithful to forgive. And here's the third thing I think. God is literally everywhere at every time in all places, in all spaces sitting right here beside Elijah today asking me this question. <laughs> God is the God who was, the God who is, and the God who is to come. He's in this moment today, but you know where else God is and who God is? He's already in your tomorrow. He already knows what's coming tomorrow because he's already prepared that way for you to be in that tomorrow. You just have to walk by faith and not by sight into it. Does that make sense? God is all of these things. God is the alpha. He is the omega. He's the beginning. He is the end. He's the one who created it all. He's also the one who's going to make all things new again. Amen. And I think we're going to stop right there because that's a great one. But here's where it comes in for you. Maybe you're here today and God needs to make you new. 
Maybe you're here today and you've been running with the old crowd, doing the old thing, participating in the old sin, and you just heard, who, who is God? What is God? God is the one who is speaking to you right now. And it may sound like I'm yelling, but he speaks in a still, small voice sometimes. And if he's speaking to you today, now is your opportunity to speak back. So would you bow your heads today? Father, we thank you today. I thank you for our graduates today. I thank you, Lord, for all those who um, are in the audience, all those who are on the stage for the questions, for just everything that you've done here, just for the opportunity to see people like Declan grow in his faith and through his testimony. God, what a blessing it is to see young people not be afraid to stand up and proclaim Jesus as Lord. Just to give it all to him. To not be afraid if the technology fails, if, if you don't say the right words, if you stumble, if you fall, whatever it may be, but just the, the acts of just worship today. God, I believe you brought us here for a reason, a purpose, and although it's been a different service, I know that you've been here today, that there's someone here that has heard your voice speaking to them. And God, right now in this moment, if there's one who doesn't know Jesus is Lord of their life. Maybe you just speak to them. Maybe, maybe it's a young person in the room today. Or maybe it's a young at heart person in the room today. Or maybe you're watching online. I don't want you to leave here today without having that conversation with God. And it just goes a little something like this. God, I am a sinner in desperate need of a Savior. And I'm tried living this life by my own terms and my own strength and own power and I have just failed miserably. And while it looks good on the outside, Lord, my insides are just a mess. So God, I ask you today, would you save me? Would you make me new? Would you wash me clean? Would you draw me into your presence today? I am in need of a Savior. And if that's you today, it's just that easy to start that relationship with God, just by simply calling out to him. We're going to sing a song here in just a moment. We're going to be quiet while we sit up, and I want you to continue to pray. But if God has moved you today, if God has touched you today, what I want you to do is I want you to respond to him. And maybe you need to respond during the worship song about just raising your hand and saying, Lord, I've been saved today. Thank you for saving me. And if you've never been baptized, maybe you were saved years ago or even... Maybe you were baptized years ago, but you realized that you need to be baptized again because now you're on the right side of salvation. We want to know, we want to hear from you. We would love to have that opportunity to baptize you, just to make that outward profession of an inward faith that you are a child of God. God, if there's one here today that needs you, I pray they would just call out on you in the next few months. sing a song called My Living Hope. And if you don't know Jesus, I want you to know He is your living hope today. I want everybody to go ahead and let's all stand to our feet.
morning together, church. Come on. Yeah, bro. 
thank you. Dear Lord, we thank you for this time to come here today and just get to worship your name and glorify you. And we just thank you for the talents you've blessed all the youth with on this stage that you gave us this ability to just glorify you and praise you and share it the love with everybody else. And this is where our true joy comes from. God, we thank you for all that you do. And I pray you be with us the rest of the week that we would lose this joy that you've given us and we can use it the rest of the week to spread to others who may need it. God, I pray you watch out for us and just bless us the rest of this day. And just now pray, amen. 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 You're all dismissed. God bless you. Thank you.